I'm pretty pissed. I purchased the Ambernick RG552 directly from Ambernick because as soon as I saw this system online, I thought that I needed it as the proper replacement to my RG351M, which with much more power and I mean it is, it's about the size of a Switch Lite. And I've actually been cooking up a full review for it since I got it last month, but I decided to give it some extra time in the oven because of its lackluster performance, even on Android for the price. However, not even a full month had passed and I already have a non-functioning unit with no support whatsoever from Ambernick themselves. Do not buy this product. Here is my story. So firstly, this is going to be a plastic device that design-wise looks fantastic to me, honestly. It looks like a really nice Switch Lite. I went with a black model and honestly, I think it's very nice and very comfortable to hold. This display was beautiful too, with amazing colors, and it was touch sensitive too. And they included an active fan to go with the CPU. This time, and I do like how the cool air flows out from the very top and it actually cools off my fingers a bit when I'm using it, or when I was using it. It's close to the size of a Switch Lite, but thicker without a doubt, and featured clickable analog sticks that are symmetrical. So this device has one of my favorite layouts, and I genuinely loved it at first sight. So those were my initial impressions on it, and I even enjoyed the software experience too since it had the ATV launcher installed by default. Now at first it didn't come with the Google Play Store, which almost made me return it because this is an Android device, but you can dual boot at the very least into Linux. However, I've seen Linux performance compared to its Android performance, so I didn't really want to go through that quite frankly. So not long after, Ambernick released a firmware update that included the Google Play Store, and I started enjoying this device again since I could finally download whatever apps I wanted for it, for the most part at least. I was able to download a PlayStation 2 emulator and GameCube, so like Dolphin for instance, and things like that. I even got Stadia on here, and I was able to test all of these things. It was quite pleasant, and play using either the touchscreen or the buttons. Again, I was really enjoying it. However, something pretty minor happened that soured everything and made this device completely unusable. Besides the performance issues where you definitely were not getting your money's worth as this could barely play any GameCube at all, and PlayStation 2 was also unplayable, I decided to maybe just wait it out until there was a better firmware version to possibly improve performance. Well, my issue ended up being more hardware related, unfortunately. So the power button started to sink in over here and it became harder to press at first. And then literally just a day after, or I should say, I think it was on the same day, the button just fell into the shell itself. So when I pressed it to try and, and wake the system just one time, it fell right through. Do you know what this means? This means no waking this device even if I keep it turned on because it would also, uh, because it would only wake through that button. No powering this device on or off because the power button wasn't attached anymore. This means that I can't use this device at all anymore as well. But I figured that since I purchased this directly from Ambernick and not really a third party seller or anything like that, maybe I could get something resolved and turn this paperweight into a working system again. I tried not to execute any kinds of repairs myself at this time either because I didn't really want to avoid any sort of warranties that this probably could have had or potential covered repairs. Well, here's how that went. So I emailed Ambernick letting them know what happened and I, I include pictures as well. So, so they actually responded pretty quickly and then asked for my order number, which I then provide. Later, they asked for a video of the situation, so I recorded this clip that you're seeing on screen and sent it to them after that. So, they didn't reply. So, what happened after that is that I emailed them again to follow up and they haven't replied in over a week by now. So, I emailed them yet again a few days ago. No response as of today. I'm pretty convinced that they don't plan on helping me out at this point or even suggest a repair whatsoever. This is incredibly unprofessional. This is the worst customer support that I have seen from any company, and I'm rather disappointed by how crummy they've been. Ambernick, if you somehow see this, feel free to respond to my email, because I still have a damaged RG552 that's completely unusable, and I paid full price for this piece of shit. So there is that issue that I have had, but not that many people have been experiencing. However, it's because of this that I genuinely regret to say that the risk 
isn't really worth this potentially happening and then only being able to use this as a $230 paperweight. That's why I'm going to advise you that you look away from their RG552 line. But if you really want this model still, and purchase it on Amazon instead, where they will actually honor a proper return policy. And they have fantastic support in case anything like this ends up happening to you. So you will get a replacement if you go through Amazon, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly certain. You will pay a little bit more if you buy it on Amazon for this unit, but it's definitely worth it. And it's what I should have done, honestly, to begin with. Because I don't really want to support this company anymore, considering what happened here. And the fact that... I haven't heard from them since I emailed them with my issues regarding their product. I've already purchased other review units of other products from Ambernick, but once I'm done reviewing those, I don't want to continue to support this company if this is how I as a customer am going to be treated and if this is the kind of product that I should expect at higher MSRP than a first party Nintendo Switch Lite that will most likely not do this to me. So thank you for watching. I really just wanted this to be a warning, I suppose, or just to share my experiences with you in case you were thinking of getting an RG552. Um, I don't recommend it. And uh, I suppose that I want to give a special thanks to the patrons, the tier threes in particular, which are going to be Aliyah, Saad, Ozel, and Omar. Thank you so much for all of your support because it really does go a long way. Um, and on to the rest of the patrons coming right up. And this is super important. I would just like to give a very special thanks to all of our patrons, which are going to be listed right here on the screen. Again, a massive thanks to you all for supporting us to help us create the kind of content that we bring to you on a day-to-day -day basis. And thank you so much for supporting at the Tech Summit podcast as well. And just remember that if you would like to be a part of this community too, and then do make sure to check out the links to our Patreon, where you don't only get bonus episodes of our podcast, but you also get automatically entered into one of our monthly giveaways of a tech product that we have reviewed that is of at least $50 in value or higher. So links to that down below. So if you want to ask me questions live, of course, uh, then feel free to follow me on Twitch. I would love to tell you everything about my experiences with the RG552 if you're curious, or maybe any other retro handheld uh, that I've been using. And I've actually been testing out quite a few as of late. So with that said, this has been Francisco from Tech Summit. Thank you for watching, and I will be seeing you all later. Have a good day.